Hey guys, welcome to New York City. I am taking over TFL Car Chat podcast this week because I am in New York City at the 2024 New York Auto Show, and this is Best of New York Auto Show. But I couldn't do this myself. I need another opinion. So I found a friend. Hey, Andre. Hey, Sofian. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, dude. Uh, this is Sofian from Redline Reviews. Uh, he's a friend of ours, and also you're here looking at all the new metal, right? Yeah, I mean, Andre's kind of here by himself, so I, f I felt bad. <laughs> I wanted to help him out and stuff, because I also appreciate you know, the TFL team and all you guys do. You guys do a lot. But uh, yeah, I guess we're kicking things off with the new <laughs> Nissan Kicks. <laughs> yes, so we're gonna go over the floor basically and we're gonna show you all the new unveilings, right? Yeah. That, that are here. And I also wanna like take a step back a little bit, like look at the higher level mm -hmm. at the show because like at Chicago Auto Show two months ago, there was only like one or two unveilings, oh, right? Oh, it was really slim pickings. Uh, now here in New York, there's more. Oh yeah. More going on, but still it's like a single hall, kind of compact. Yeah. Well, it makes it easier for us because we can kind of just walk around the show and everything's here. It's like a buffet. And of course, you publish your channel, um, once again, Redline Reviews. You do highly in-depth videos. Oh, well, thanks, Andre. So, <laughs> so we won't go like into every detail. I'll try to save that for my channel. <laughs> <laughs> but, so let's talk about the Kicks, dude. Yeah, so this is the second generation Kicks and it's Nissan's most affordable SUV. I say that in quotes because I didn't really think the old one was an SUV, but this new one, Andre, Definitely looks more like an SUV, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and it has new design, just completely redesigned. I mean, when I first saw images of this, I was like, oh my goodness, I, it, it almost looks like a bigger truck to me. Yeah, like they definitely went with a bolder, more masculine and boxier look. You can see the grill is much larger. It's got these really cool kind of stacked LED headlights and all the kicks now have LED headlights, which is nice because remember, this is their most affordable SUV. So we don't know the pricing yet, but it's gonna probably be in the low 20 grand range. I was looking at this earlier and um, the current Nissan Kicks starts at like 22-ish, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And that's a low price, but this looks a little bit larger, right? Yes. And the price could creep up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say this is probably going to be closer to 25, but I wouldn't be surprised if the base model is closer to 25. But the huge news is all-wheel drive. Yes, because you can now get all-wheel drive for the first time, and they also gave it around 20 more horsepower under the hood, so it's not going to be quite so slow anymore, hopefully. Right, but it's still a two liter, right? Yes, two no liter, turbocharger. No turbocharger, so it's all about efficiency and just low cost. Let's look around the back really quick. Hey, podcast listeners and TFL Talk viewers. I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a quick and simple way to sell your car or truck with the help of our new partner, High Road. With High Road's online portal, you enter your vehicle's VIN number or plate, mileage, and zip code, and you'll get competing offers from several qualified dealers in your area within seconds. You pick the best deal offered and follow through with the dealer to sell your car. No more managing scammy emails from buyers on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. No more time wasted on no-show buyers. No bait and switch with a, will you take a check excuse from sketchy buyers. Now keep in mind, these offers will be for trade-in values of your vehicle. If you want to go through the hassle of getting more for your car, that's up to you. But if you want to sell your car hassle free and fast, go to tflcar.com and click sell your car in the navigation menu. Or click on the high road ad at the bottom of the website if you're on mobile, or click on the column if you're on a desktop. High road makes it easy and we like easy. There's a lot of journalists here still because, I mean, it's almost the end of the first day, but a lot of interest, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the show floor closes in less than an hour, but uh, this thing still has a pretty decent sized crowd around it. And uh, what do you think of the two-tone roof, Andre? This is different, for I, sure. I'm, I'm usually a fan of this. Yeah. Um, and also, it's done here kind of in silver and red on yes, top. Yes, it's different. I kind of like like white roofs mm -hmm. myself, but I like to tell I don't know, what about this kink kind of in the, in the back? Yeah, I mean, Nissan's been kind of doing the floating roof design here for a while. It's just kind of like a new variation. It even says kicks right there. It's kind of nice and nice. Yeah, and let, let me different. show that really yeah. quick. I kind of wish it glowed as well. That'd be cool if it actually lit up. <laughs> it's hard to see that. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. If it lit up, it'd be great. And then you can see the taillights have that same kind of stacked look to them and they actually are LED. So I wasn't expecting that. It's like an LED combination. Well, because it's an entry segment, like you said, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's value conscious, mm -hmm. uh, but also it's a very crowded segment of yes. vehicles too. Yeah, this segment's been growing, and let's check out the interior. I mean, Andre, this interior does not look like an entry-level car. I mean, those screens were basically poached from the Aria, um, which is literally like going to be probably twice the price of this, and it's two 12-inch displays. It just looks really nice. Yeah, I was reading some comments on my video that mm -hmm. I published about this, mm -hmm. and some people said, uh, there needs to be a high-performance version of this with uh, a turbo. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Especially all-wheel drive, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And also, a lot of people are still have the the history of that Xtronic, the right? CVT. The CVT, and yeah. some people are not huge fans of that. How do you look at that? You know, CVTs have never been a transmission for enthusiasts, and I understand that, but I think for the people who buy these, the typical average customer, they honestly won't even notice. They'll put it in drive and just drive it. Yeah, and it also kind of, I mean, they've been doing them for years. Yes. If you maintain it, you know, I don't want to sound like a Nissan salesman, but like <laughs> I've talked to owners, right? If you maintain the transmission, change fluids, it could still last yeah. a, a, a long time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, everything is about how you take care of it. The back seat also, Andre, you're showing it, is, is also relatively spacious. I think it got an inch more leg room. Now, it's not obviously huge for probably somebody your height, but uh, it's definitely an improvement. So any, yeah. any extra space helps. All righty, well, let's kind of keep moving. Yeah, um, where should we was, head to next? This was one of the hugest parts <laughs> of this uh, unveiling. Yes. Um, the Nissan booth, I mean, it has, you know, frontiers, but we've seen that in previous shows. I want to quickly stop by Chevy. Okay. This way, because it has the tracks, or I'm sorry, also the Trailblazer. Yes. Right, because they are kind of compete against the Kicks. Yeah, I guess they have two models that kind of compete with the Kicks because the Trax doesn't offer all-wheel drive. Yeah, that's kind of the base model, right? Right, right. right there. And then the uh, Trail Blazer is the all-wheel drive model. I know, it's it's strange to have two models. It's like, why couldn't they just offer the Trax with all-wheel drive? I don't yeah. really understand that. Personally, I think I actually like the look of the Trailblazer, or the Trax more, because uh, this is the Trailblazer, yeah. but it's, a, it's also a nice, attractive-looking small SUV. And actually, the Chevrolet booth is really huge. Yes. I mean, they have a huge footprint here as well. And also Ford is on the side next to Nissan, also a very huge footprint. But they didn't really unveil much today other than the special kind of custom Mustang, right? Yeah, they were basically, we were expecting them to reveal the 60th anniversary Mustang, but they just said that that's coming on April 17th. Which is the birthday. <laughs> Which is the birthday. So Which that makes the, sense, yeah. but it kind of sucks. It, it would be kind of <laughs> weird to unveil the 60th anniversary car in March, and it wasn't really born in March, That's right? true. That so is true. <laughs> I think a lot of enthusiasts might be upset, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's keep moving this way, because uh, I saw a police version of the Blazer EV. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that yet. Because I know it exists because they announced it a long time ago, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yes. I see it over there behind this uh, old Equinox. Yeah, but now it's actually here in person. So if you're in the area uh, and you want to, uh, you know, come down here, you can also check out this police version of the car. Uh, this is the Blazer EV that's been on sale. There was a stop sale. There was some software issues. Now it's back, right? Right. Uh, and they lowered the price too. Oh, they did. I, I didn't. I didn't quite catch what the low, new lower price is. But I, that's a plus. I, I don't know the exact number, but um, they actually lowered the price because, in my opinion, the the initial price was pretty high. It was like in the mid 50s, if I remember correctly. And approaching yeah. 60. Even. Yeah. Um, but I was, you know, TFL Roman bought um, that police charger. Uh -huh. You know, the used I remember that, charger. Yeah. <laughs> and I was talking to some police officers, and actually, love a lot of them love the electrification because they sit around a lot, right? Yeah, sit down to burn waiting. gas. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's definitely more efficient that way instead of burning burning gas, wasting it. And also you have all the energy, you have all the lights when yep. you're sitting down, you know, all the radios are, you know, are on. Right. But speaking of electricity, we, uh, should, we need to look at this, right? Yes, because Porsche typically, you don't see them at these shows, at least not lately, but right. they actually brought their uh, newest model here, which is the Macan EV. This is an important car for them because the Macan's their best seller and this is now fully electric and it's all new. Yeah, and so um, I don't know a ton about this. I did a video, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I studied all the specs. What's kind of your take on this? You know, the Macan EV, it, what's interesting is because you think that it shares a lot with the gas Macan, but it shares absolutely nothing. It's built on their new PPE, premium platform, electric platform. So it shares 
the architecture with the Q6 e-tron. So it runs on the 800 volt architecture. There's a Macan 4 and a Macan Turbo. This is the turbo, which makes like 631 horsepower. So 3.1 seconds to 60. And check that out, Andre. It has this new design language where that's not the headlight, it's down here, divorced lower in the, in the front bumper. What do you think of that? I'm not sure I'm a fan. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with you. But you know, this <laughs> yeah. orientation mm -hmm. is, a lot of people are doing it. It's very trendy, right? Yeah, now. so GM is doing it. Yeah. You know, you can see, you know, a lot of those vehicles over there with yep. a similar design. Hyundai, I think, was doing it. Jeep started doing it a long time ago, so. What I like about this design is that it's, you won't mistake it, it's a Porsche. Right. Right, I mean, the upper section. Yeah, this is um, very Porsche. Yeah, so you can really see, I mean, even with the family, there's a Panamera, I believe, mm -hmm. and there's a Taycan over there, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, this um, car kind of just looks almost like a combination of a Macan and a Taycan to me. So I like kind I of like a the tall. Look. Yeah, just a tall, well, it is, a tall Taycan. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and shorter, right? Yes. Yeah, I think this is around five inches shorter. But check this out, Andre. What do you think of the kind of coupe-like shape? I wasn't expecting that when uh, this car first. Uh, arrived. it's also kind of trendy, right? Mm -hmm. yep. When you have like the Genesis GV80 coupe, yep. right? Or the and, X6 or something and, like the yeah. GLE coupe. Um, so I think it's it's very very trendy as well. And this car, I was told, is already, like, you could order it, you can configure it, mm -hmm. and they're going to be delivering soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's going to be Porsche's probably best-selling EV. It's also their first electric SUV as well. So, I mean, it makes sense. You take their best-selling gas-powered Macan and make it electric, and, you know, the people should flock to it. But, I mean, of course, we'll have to wait to drive it, right, to see yeah. exactly what it's like. Yeah. Let's keep moving a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but... Pricing starts at over like over eighty thousand. It was like so. seventy eight nine plus destination. This yeah. one is a hundred and five at least. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not going to be your most affordable. No, no, but it's a Porsche. They charge it's you an a, arm and a leg it's, for it's everything. It's a Porsche, <laughs> but they do it for a reason. It's because you know it drives like a Porsche. Oh yeah, right? I mean it, it has all the. Here's of course the Taycan. Yeah, so I was actually just in Spain driving this literally last week, the revised one. And this model you can tell is the turbo because the turbos are the only ones that have this little kind of little crease right there, okay. uh, distinct distinction. But uh, it's a pretty big refresh. It's got bigger batteries, more power, updated interior with more tech. So it, it doesn't look all that different, but uh, I gotta tell you, I can't talk about how it drives yet, but uh, I was very impressed. I was just it. about to ask you how it drives. <laughs> I wish I could talk about how it drives, but the embargo <laughs> ends next week. <laughs> but look, it's kind of sitting up. Like yes. it's got this air suspension. Yeah, they call it Porsche Adaptive Ride. So when the car, when you open up the door, Andre, it actually will raise up two inches instantly to help you get in. And oh, then when interesting. You, and then when you close it, it'll lower itself pretty quickly too. Okay, so it kind of reacts to the people in, in this way. Yeah, and you can turn that feature on and off, but it really is designed to improve the handling, the ride quality of the vehicle, and it's uh, it looks interesting now because it's like a sedan that's lifted up, kind of like a Subaru Outback sedan. Well, stay tuned <laughs> to your channel, right, for a review coming up, right? Yeah, that's coming on April 3rd. Uh, I'll have the, the full video of this uh, drive, how this drives later on. I can almost hear the air compressor right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's go this way. Um, always at New York at a show, there is this special luxury section. Oh, yeah, right? all the exotic brands, they have their cars over yeah. here. Yeah, so there's Lamborghini. Um, the Urus, the uh, Aventador, no, the, what is that one? That's not the that's, Aventador, that's, that's, that's the... That's the Lotus. Oh, yeah, that's the Lotus Electra? Yeah. I think that is. Let's check it out really quick. Check it out really yeah, quick. Yeah, I actually haven't seen one of these in person. I actually thought it was a Lamborghini at first when I saw look, it. Look, it kind of looks Lamborghini-ish. Yeah. <laughs> but look at the color. It's like almost pink. Yeah. Yeah, I love that because it kind of changes based on uh, when the light hits it. Yeah. So that's different. Oh, man, look at that, Andre. They're also doing the trendy thing of putting the headlights separate from the daytime running lights. I don't know if I like that on this car. It's weird. It's different. So there must be some other benefit to it. Like... You know how IHS now studies headlight yep. design and yeah. how safe it is? Maybe the positioning of it allows for better better lighting and Who light knows? distribution. So maybe I should maybe I should interview like a engineer soon <laughs> and actually get to the bottom of this. <laughs> See, this is what I think of when I think of a Lotus. Yes. The Amira. Sexy, gorgeous, like their last internal combustion car that's new. And I had a chance to drive one in LA last year. Oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, because these new electric ones. I mean, Lotus was always about lightweight, you know, performance, and electric cars are heavy. That's not lightweight. I mean, I think that thing is like over 5,000 pounds, versus yeah, this or, is like 3,000 pounds. Yeah, so. so this is what the Lotus traditionally has been right. and should be, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, let's keep moving. 
a little bit further, a couple of Rolls, Rolls Royces. Yep, there's, there's a Spectre. Spectre. Yep. You know, uh, uh, at our, near our hotel, there was a Spectre last night parked. Oh, really? Uh, I, I on missed the street. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> so Not surprised. We're there, staying at the Equinox, the fancy hotel. Yeah, here. and this is Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's keep moving here towards VW. Yeah. So VW didn't really announce or had a, have a big announcement today. No. But they but, did have the, the American ID buzz, and then there's also the ID7, which I haven't had a chance to see like at an auto show in a while, I feel like. We, we can take a glimpse. Yeah, sure. I, I didn't see it today either. I saw it briefly in Chicago as a kind of a concept. Okay. Or not a concept, European model, oh, right? Oh, yes, yep. But this is a, look, it has an American license plate <laughs> yeah, size, so this, right? This is probably the US spec car that's going on sale later this year. Yeah, so there's, here's the ID7. Yeah, basically this thing kind of replaces like the Arteon. It's the electric Arteon. It's a, it's a liftback. It's a traditional sedan. You know, I have to say like it's, it's a handsome car, but it also just doesn't really wow me in terms of design. But maybe it'll wow me in it's, terms of how it drives. But it's sizable. I mean, yeah. seeing it in person, yeah. it looks very large. Like you said, it's kind of a liftback, so it's got that coupe shape. Right. Um, and it's humongous. I mean, it's pretty large. Yeah. No, Large I mean, wheelbase. Yes, yeah, the wheels you can see are pushed out to the corner. It also has a higher roof line, so that's going to give you more interior space. But maybe that's what kind of throws me off is like, it's like very bubbly. Yeah, at like, the design. especially like that section towards yep. the back. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's a nice car, but honestly, what I'm super excited about is what's behind you, Andre, is this yeah. ID Buzz. I mean, this thing we've been waiting for for like, I feel like three years. Maybe like Europe's had it for a couple of years, and we're finally supposed to get this in the US probably by the end of this year, so you have to continue waiting a little bit longer. You know, I remember, and I think you were there too, like, gosh, six or seven or eight years ago, there was a concept buzz. Oh, the micro like in Detroit. or something like that? Yeah, I think I remember uh, seeing that. Uh, it was yellow. Yep. And ever since then, I've been waiting. Yep. So like <laughs> you said, you've been waiting like four years. I've been waiting like eight years. I know. <laughs> uh, um, it's really cool. Um, you know, I actually had a chance. I was in um, Sweden okay. recently. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, these are European models. Oh, so oh, this is still a European model. Look at that. <laughs> that's how you can tell it's got the European plug on the back. Uh-huh. <laughs> so um, they're on the roads. Yeah. I saw a lot of them driving around. So, and actually, they look good on a highway. Okay. They look really great. Yeah. I mean, I think that when Volkswagen starts selling this in the U.S., the first, like, U.S. American people are going to see it. They're going to start chasing this thing down on the road, I'm sure. Yeah. And it's not going to be cheap no right because it's large it's yeah. got a big battery it's got you know electric motors yeah i'd say 50 grand at least to start which yeah. is expensive and probably but... a lot more with options right yeah yeah loaded one easily 70 probably so we'll have to wait and see but uh i'm still excited for this thing all right let's keep moving yeah so that's really fun to see some of the new electric stuff from v -Dub. Um, Toyota has a huge presence, as yes. always. Yeah, they don't have anything new. I mean, they have a lot of new stuff, but they've already revealed it. So instead, we just get to kind of get a second look at all of the new stuff. And we're also, I don't know, you're, you're going as well, Andre. Like, literally yeah. next next week, we're going to be driving, like, f our four new Toyotas and seeing a new reveal of something. Yeah. So, and the Land Cruiser is going to be one of those drives. Yes, right so there. So that's coming up, <laughs> I believe, that's like almost like the second week of April. Yep. And also, there's probably an embargo on that, right? So yeah. it's coming in April. Yep. But I cannot wait to actually drive the new Land Cruiser and actually see what it's like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I had a chance to drive the new GX, and I think you guys had one at the office recently. We did. Loved it. Absolutely yeah. loved it. So I'm excited yeah. for this. I am yeah, very excited. Let's keep moving a little bit further. Oh, we have to go to Kia, yes, right? Yes, because they did have a new reveal let's, here. Let's go around. <laughs> And of course, Subaru always likes to do their extra, extra displays here to, uh, to show you huge, how, how rugged and wilderness their vehicles are. And huge trees, yep. you know, and uh, different exhibits. And they uh, have dogs, too. Exhibits. They, have, they have puppies that you can uh, adopt, too. <laughs> so a lot of manufacturers like Ford, GM, others have been going away from sedans, right? Yeah. Um, going to SUVs only or pickup trucks only. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kia, of course, is still staying with the sedan theme. Yeah. And yeah. they unveiled something really interesting. Yeah, it was actually kind of unexpected. I mean, I love the fact that Kia is kind of still dabbling in the sedan segment, but I wasn't expecting them to start changing their names because, as you guys know, the Optima was renamed to the K5 a couple of years ago. But now we've got a new replacement for the Forte, which the Forte has been around for 15 years as the Civic and Corolla fighter. I, I know. But now, Andre, it's called the K4. Like, but 
<laughs> Isn't there a brand like equity in using that name and they're just kind of totally renaming it? Yeah, they're kind of just throwing it away. And I agree there is brand equity, but I've just never been a fan of alphanumeric names. I really like actual names like Forte or you know Cadenza Optima. So this I think looks fantastic, but again, I look at it and I see the new Forte, but it's again called the K4. Okay, and there's a K5 next to it. Yes, which kind of looks very similar, like the K... I actually thought that they were the same cars before I first like, had a chance to actually realize it, but, uh, but no, I mean, what do you think of the look, Andre? They, they I, definitely took a lot of styling from the EV9 here. Yeah, and look at how low the hood is. That was really impressive. That is, that is true, and I'm yeah. not a very tall guy, but this is actually very low. <laughs> it's very aerodynamic looking, right? Yeah. Yeah, and also like you can see, the, it's a it's a long vehicle. Kia actually says it's the longest vehicle in the segment, um, and it really again just kind of gives you that teardrop shape. It almost looks like a sportback, like a Kia Stinger almost. For some reason, they decided to play loud music they when did. we entered. <laughs> uh, let's step let's step this way. Um, I wanted to point out the the rear door handle is hidden. Yes. In, yeah. in the C pillar, basically. Yeah, which again tries to give you more of like that coupe look to it versus like a sedan, which okay, I like it. It's different. I mean, this one here is the GT line, and I think it has the turbo engine, so it's the top of the top of the food it's chain. About 190 horsepower now, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to blow the doors off of anything, but it should be you know good enough for most people. You know, there is a trend always that more, 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 more power. Yeah. But also more efficiency is important. Yeah, because so there's no hybrid. There's... there's no hybrid of this right now. So. Yeah, there's. It's more important now, right? Right. And this is the K5 that looks kind of similar. Yep. You can see the family resemblance, mm -hmm. but once again, larger. Yes, larger. I think it's like maybe five or maybe seven inches longer, but honestly, just to the naked eye, they look almost like the same size. But you can tell the difference by the headlamp design. Yes, right? yeah. Very different headlight and design. Big way. I still think this is a really good looking car. Again, the Stinger is gone, and this to me kind of just looks like Kia took the design of the Stinger and grafted it onto the K5. All right, let's keep moving. Yeah. Uh, there's a big Honda display over here, but they did not really unveil anything brand new today. No, I mean, Honda actually has a lot of new stuff that's coming. They have, Acura has the revised MDX that they're going to be showing soon, and there's also the Civic Hybrid that's coming, but uh, none of that sadly is here. So um, they still have a great lineup of cars. I mean, the Prologue is the brand's first all-electric SUV, although most of you guys probably know it's a rebadged Chevy Blazer EV, but I have to say it's still good looking. Yeah, and it's different enough, in my opinion. I so agree. They I agree. made it different enough to where you could say, okay, it's a Honda, right? Yes. Not completely uh, collaboration. Right. Unless you get inside and you see a lot of like GM switch gear, right? And you hear the GM bong, which I did not love when I first turned this car off back in the day. But uh, yeah, you have an 11 inch display over there, which is their older you know, GM head unit. So it's not the new one from the Blazer that apparently was very problematic. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's keep moving a little bit further. Um, this is a good transition because Infinity is here. Yes, because they did reveal something here too, and yeah. this is big for them. Yeah, and you actually, what, a week or two ago, you got to see it? Yeah, I, they, so they had me go out to LA in a studio before the reveal. I got a chance to uh, film it in person earlier, and I have to say, this is a car that they needed badly, so I, I'm happy to say that they've done a lot to kind of uh, upgrade the brand image. Yeah, so, uh, and this is kind of near and dear to my heart because this is the new QX80 full-size SUV, right. and I'm a truck guy. Yes. And this is basically a truck. Yeah, it's body on frame. Yeah. Um, although you do have an in all independent suspension, air suspension for the first time. And uh, you know, you can see the silhouette still looks like a QX80, but it's completely new under the skin, new frame. And the Andre, the interior of this thing, oh my God. Like, Do you, do you like it? I do. I mean, yeah. Infinity has so badly needed a tech upgrade, and this definitely delivers. I mean, you have two 14.3 inch displays that kind of almost merge together to create one giant display. You have these gorgeous red and two-tone seats that are heated and ventilated and massaging. And the second row seats are also massaging too. And check out the other speakers. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> it looks like a headdress or something, or like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. No. It's, Something it's, weird. It's very different, but it's a, a Klipsch audio system. Yeah. Um, I think it's like 30 plus speakers, so it's uh, it's going to be among the best you're going to see. And the one they're showing here at the show is the Autograph Edition, which is like their highest end. The extra bougie one. Uh, extra bougie <laughs> and also quite expensive, right? They raised the price quite a bit. Yeah. This one they said was around 110 grand. The base models are around 82. It's expensive, but you know what? The uh, Escalade's around the same money too. Yeah. And I was actually looking into this because I did a video about this as well. And 
uh, this pricing like GMC Yukon you can get for 100K, yep. right? Yep. And so there are a lot of vehicles in this price range. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to choose, but you know what, Andre, if you want a Japanese three row body on frame truck based SUV, I mean, there's the Lexus LX, which also is around the same price, but it doesn't have the interior or cargo space of this car. Yeah, because the LX is quite a bit smaller, actually. It is, yes. Uh, but maybe more off roady. More right. off -roady. This is not quite off roady, and they're showing it, of course, with 22s, yes. right? And also, I don't know if you noticed, Andre, they don't have they don't offer the QX80 now with a low range transfer case anymore. Oh, they got rid of it because it's probably going to be on the Armada. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, and I want to quickly show the engine. Yes, the engine is over here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, that's right. A, they have the there, actual a, engine. I thought you wanted me to pop the hood. I was no, like, no, no. I don't uh, want to do that. <laughs> there's there's way too many people. Yes. Um, this is big news also because. The V8 is gone, right? Yeah, sadly the V8 is gone. I mean, the I love the V8, uh, but it was a thirsty 5.6 liter. This, however, is a modern engine. It's essentially a variation of the GTR's motor. It's a twin turbo, three and a half liter, making 450 horsepower, 515 pound-feet of torque. So near the top of the class, only the Wagoneer uh, with the inline six has more power. Yeah. So are you saying this could be the next Godzilla? I mean, well, I, not quite. <laughs> I would love if they put this motor in the. Uh, the, Nis the Nissan Z, the Nismo Z, if they put yeah. this motor in it, like more but power. But you know, I'm going to shed a tear as we're moving forward. Yep. I'm going to shed a tear because <laughs> the Titan's going away. Oh, yeah. And this engine could have been in the Titan it as well. Been, yeah. Yeah, that would have uh, been a great, a great powertrain option, but it's sad because the Titan never really did well for Nissan for sales. Yeah. And I mean, the QX80 has a chance to really kind of reboot, yeah. you know, their flagship. Right. And also uh, maybe even bring new people in, right? They desperately need it. For sure. They just all really right. Need it. So, what do we have here? Did you look at the Polestar? I had. At a all? Yeah. Let's let's go take a look at. It. I actually I did had a chance to do a, a full video on them. This is actually my first time seeing the uh, Polestar Four in person. Which I have to say, I don't know if you you did. Did you get I, a chance to do I, a video? I did not yet. Um, also, GMC is back here. Yes. Uh, but they did not unveil anything today. So no. Nope. No new stuff. Um, and then we can finish off with Hyundai and, and Genesis, Genesis. Yeah. Which was really show-stopping. Oh yes, Genesis had a lot for us to, sh to, yeah. to take a look at today. So, so this is th the three. Yeah, so this is the brand's first electric SUV. Um, and it's kind of like riding on the same platform as the Volvo EX90, but size-wise, it's in between like a Model X and a Model Y as well. Um, Price-wise also, Andre, I don't know if you saw, they just they literally just announced like a couple weeks ago, they were discounting the price by 10 grand. It starts at 73.9 now versus 84. Okay. Back when it first came out. Well, that's out. more reasonable. Definitely more reasonable. Um, I think they're working on this one just <laughs> Yeah, briefly. just ignore, ignore the fact that the hood's open with all this stuff removed. Well, it's a frunk. Yes. <laughs> um, you know what? It's good looking. So, Andre, this is the Polestar 4, which Polestar's naming philosophy doesn't make any sense to me. Because, <laughs> because you know, they have the 1, which was their you know, limited production coupe that was a plug-in hybrid. And they have the 2, which is a Model 3 competitor. Now they have the 3, which is an SUV. The 4, I would assume it would to be like an SUV coupe version of the 3, but this is actually in between the 2 and the 3 for price and size, which is weird. Well, I guess maybe they're counting the order in which they were unreleased. <laughs> That's what it is. It's basically, this is their fourth model. There's also yeah. going to be a Polestar 5 and a Polestar 6, but they're calling this an SUV, Andre. Does this look like an SUV to you? No, it's very low. No, it's a And it's also, a it has no rear glass. Yeah, so this was a point of controversy. Instead of the rear glass, it's been closed off and you have a camera there that gives you a digital live feed of uh, what's actually behind you. Which isn't okay. anything new, but I think yeah. a lot of people are just pissed off that there's no actual glass because you can't have the option to look through. <laughs> there's a similar thing going on with a Cybertruck where if you close the tunnel cover on the Cybertruck, you, you can't see anything anyways. Right, right. So I mean, as long as similar. the camera works back there, I think it's kind of okay to not have it. But uh, I don't know. What do you think of the styling of it, Andre? It's definitely different. Um, it's, it's good. I, I kind of like Volvo style and kind of Polestar style. It's minimalist, but I think, I think it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm still... I'm still not sure about the missing glass, but... <laughs> yeah, because it looks like it, it would be here. They just covered it with a panel, and uh, I think you can, yeah, you can open this up. It's supposed to be power, but uh, the trunk is a pretty decent size, you can see. Yeah, it's uh, completely uh, closed, covered up, but okay. uh, it's a liftback, so it's all got a decent amount of trunk space. All right, well, let them finish working on it, and let's yes. go. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's, uh, so Hyundai made a lot of news today, too. Yes, they As had we got two, in trouble a little bit. <laughs> two unveilings for us here. Uh, so they updated, refreshed Tucson. 
Yes. And also a refreshed uh, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz, yeah. yeah. I almost said Santa Fe myself a couple times. Well, Santa Fe is already <laughs> on sale. Yep. <laughs> so we're done with that. Yep. <laughs> so here, this is uh, kind of close to my heart because we had one for a year. Nathan Adlin bought one. That's right. He did on, have one on our team. Yep. So you can kind of see the more upright face. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I mean, the styling changes here are very subtle. In fact, I'm actually surprised that they're already refreshing it because I feel like it just came out. <laughs> like, it was so, a 2022, right? Yeah, I was like, I was like, 2022 wasn't that long ago, but but hey, yeah. we got some we got some updates to the styling. The grill's a little bit bigger. They changed the the way the running lights look. The headlights also a little bit bolder. And then this one's not the uh, XRT, but there's now these big tow hooks at the front. As yeah, well. we'll show that in a second. Yeah. But the interior is kind of wildly different. Yes. Um, the dash, the shelf that's up here and the curved screen uh, are all new. Yeah, so it now has that curved um, panoramic display, so two 12.3-inch displays, and now it finally has a wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. That's something that Hyundai's been needing to add for a while. Yeah, and also knobs. So controls, really, you know, controls for the radio and controls for the climate control system are now physical, mostly physical. Yeah, and I think for truck buyers, they, de they definitely uh, prefer, prefer to have that option. Yeah, and I also was looking at like the Maverick, also as a comparison, of course, yep. and Maverick has physical controls. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of Hyundai kind of giving a nod to say, okay, that makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah, right, it's what you want, it's what we're gonna give this you. This is the new one. So is it the new one? Because the new <laughs> one is very subtle. Uh, yeah, right. so just like the Santa Cruz, this was this car came out in 2022, so we have a very light refresh of the style uh, of the Tucson. Of the Tucson, right? Yeah. This is their this is important because this is their best seller. They did like 210,000 last year, um, so it competes with like a Rav4 CRV. So this model we're looking at is the N line, and it only comes as a hybrid. So that's something that I think people appreciate. Yeah, but they have different choices on powertrains, right? Plug-in hybrid yep. and regular. And regular gas, yep. yeah. So it's nice to have those choices. You can see it also has the same two-screen layout there. It's got the new steering wheel with the uh, the four dots there that basically stand for H in Morse code. Um, can you open the door for me yeah. really quick? Yeah, of course. I, I, I noticed this. Um, is this all new, this kind of console? Yeah, so the console, they redid it where they moved the shifter to the steering column. Uh, they repositioned the... Uh, yeah. The uh, wireless charger now it has that same kind of look as the Santa Fe, uh, and it's just it's nicer because it offers more storage. I think people will appreciate. And I think it's closer at hand, yes. right? You can put your hand there yep. and really operate those switches. Right. So that's pretty nice. Well, let's keep moving because there's also the XRT. Yes. Uh, Tucson and XRT Santa, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz, right? Yeah, that that thing over there. Which Andre? What color is that in your eyes? Um, <laughs> Orange-ish. It's orange, right? But they call it Canyon Red. And I was like very perplexed. I was well, like, wait, it looks red on right. that TV Yeah, that, screen. Cause I'm pretty sure that's the same color, but. <laughs> so it changes color. Right, well, I guess it makes sense cause they call it Canyon Red and sometimes the canyons can yeah. kind of give you an orangey tint, but. Especially like in Utah or something like that, right? Right, right. Um, no, there's definitely looks like orange to me, but you mentioned the tow hooks. Yes. Bam. <laughs> Look how huge they are. I know, and they color match to the car, although yeah. I, I don't know if that's going to be the case for other other colors other of colors. the Santa Cruz. But, but many manufacturers do this where they kind of use red or orange to signify tow right, hooks. Right. But you know what, Andre? This thing, it has all-terrain tires, which is nice, but you know what it's begging for in my eyes? What? A lift. It needs more. It needs bigger tires and it needs a lift. on it. The suspension uh, needs to be a little higher. I, I agree. So <laughs> they have an XRT now, Yeah. right? So right. they have it now. We've tested it but they didn't give it any lift, or this one also. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they're thinking efficiency, but these tires are more aggressive, so they're yeah. already losing a little bit of efficiency. Right, with it. right, so maybe, I guess Hyundai's just leaving it up to the owners to put some kind of lift on it, but it's begging for like a two inch lift, to be honest, but it's a, it's yeah, a nice upgrade. I, I love, it looks more rugged. Yes. The wheel design is new. Mm -hmm. um, this one doesn't have a hitch, but of course you can put a hitch on it, and. Um, I think the rear bumper has changed slightly, maybe? I think so. I think like this, this right here. Yeah, this right here is different. It also, did, I don't remember if it had an integrated step before. I think it did. Okay, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's certainly nice. We'll have to nice. call Nathan and ask him. <laughs> right. Yeah, so the, the bed is 4.3 feet long and it still has the composite bed with that little underfloor trunk storage here like the Honda Ridgeline, although not quite yeah. as deep as the Ridgeline. But yeah, I, I love this thing. It's still very practical, but I think the Mavericks bed is a lot larger. If I remember. 
Maverick. And also the Maverick doesn't usually come with that roll-up tonneau cover, yeah. which actually takes some space. That is true. As, as well. So it makes it a little bit yes, less usable, but it's also still you know, still pretty nice. But I love the way the current one drives. Yeah. It just drives like a Tucson, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of Tucson with a bed. Really. Right. Exactly, yeah. And they're both made in Alabama, so Mon Montgomery facility. So, yep. so that's good to know. Yeah. All right. Now... Let's finish off at Genesis, right? Yeah. It's right over here. And I think this is really the best of New York because, well, it's a different orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call this magma orange, but yes. it actually is orange, like over there. Yes, it's true orange. Yeah, Genesis surprised us because they revealed five, or no, four vehicles, four vehicles to us, although two of them we've already seen. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, this model, or this right here, Andre, this is like forbidden fruit at least for a lot of enthusiasts, because it's not coming to the U.S., it's only going to be in the Middle East. Wait, what? Yeah, this is the G80 Magma Special, and it's only going to be offered in the Middle East in very limited numbers, and I think it's a mistake. I think uh, Genesis needs to offer it here, because look at this. This thing is gorgeous. Yeah, it, it looks like, uh, I mean, it's hunkered down. It's got big wheels, yep. loud paint job. Yep. Do you know what's powering? Did they say they, what power? They won't tell us, but um, okay. the top engine right now is that 3.5 twin turbo with like 375 horsepower. I would love to see this with the twin turbo supercharged version from the G90. That makes 409, but yeah. but they wouldn't tell us what's underneath the hood. But you way. know, this car looks like, we're looking at the G80 Magma special still. Yep. This car looks like a, like an AMG equivalent yes. or an M equivalent, yep. but those cars have more power. Yes. You know, if you're looking at an AMG, they could have 600 or above, right? Right, right, absolutely. So maybe they need something more spicy in, in this one. <laughs> Magma spi extra Ma spicy. Extra, <laughs> extra, extra spice? Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, I would say this is probably more like a, an Audi S6 or maybe an E53 competitor. But uh, but yeah, I think, I think they nailed the design. They just honestly need to offer it in the US. Oh, you know, like um, S5 Sportback mm -hmm. kind yeah. of. But but not RS5. No, right? No, because that's higher performance. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, you, I think you nailed it. But what? It, this is <laughs> this is a concept car. It is a concept car. Although you can actually drive one in the Gran Turismo game. Yeah, <laughs> in the virtual world. In the virtual could, world, and I think they call this the X Berlinetta concept. I think is what they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that, um, that's correct. It's fantastic looking. I mean, it, it's it's an, it's basically like an electric race car from the future. I don't know if this is ever going to materialize into like a flagship supercar, but uh, it's great to see Genesis kind of pushing the envelope with the, des with the des design. So it's good to yeah, see. Yeah, dude, this, this is just wild. If you have some time to come to the show, guys, um, just in, f in, in person, this car looks really impressive. Right. Of course, it is wild and <laughs> it probably will never be, you know, sold, but... Probably not. But this will be sold. Yeah, so this is the model that Genesis said is going to be the first, basically, Magma-branded performance vehicle in the U.S. from Genesis. It's the GV60 Magma concept. But to me, Andre, it looks production-ready. Yeah, <laughs> so we looked at it, what, a couple days ago, right, when they unveiled it. Yep. And I um, I think we're... You, you're not in love with the styling, and I kind of like this more than um, standard GV60. Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, the GV60 to me just was kind of like the least attractive of the siblings, like the Ionic 5 and the EV6. But this, Andre, they lowered it, they widened it, they put these big fat tires with these aerodynamic discs on it. It's got the big wing on the back that actually adds downforce uh, to it, and it, it looks hot. It looks hot, especially in the magma orange paint, yeah. so can't complain. And I think it would look great in multiple colors, other yeah. colors as well. Right. And if these wheels make it to production, please, Luke and team. <laughs> Although I, I, I worry people are going to curb the crap out of them because they, they protrude out pretty far. Uh, especially the front one. <laughs> oh, yeah, you see that? <laughs> Hold on, let me... And it also has not side mirrors, but also side cameras. Yeah, so that won't make it to production. Yeah, I noticed the aerodynamic disc on the front ones, they definitely stick out further than the rear, which is But you know what? If you're buying this car, Let's hope that you actually know how to drive, how to drive. it and how to park it, <laughs> yeah. right? Right. <laughs> but yeah, they, they didn't talk about any powertrain specs, but uh, you know, speculation, I'd say the Ionic 5N and the Kia EV6 GT are good places to start. Those have between 576 to 640 horsepower. I'd say this will probably have on the upper end of 600 for sure. It makes sense. Yeah. Plus it's the Genesis, it's their luxury brand. Yeah. So it's probably the higher it, level. It has to have it. It has to have the most power for yeah. sure. And now there's this. Oh yes, this is the one that I think everybody was kind of anticipating. We were hoping that it would be a little further along, like actually call the GV90, but the brand has needed a flagship SUV and this is essentially, you know, the mold that's going to become that. Yeah, and they're calling it the Neo Loon yep. uh, concept, like new moon. 
Yes, that's what it, um, that's what it and means. And it's wild. It's a wild concept. Yeah, to me, Andre, it gives off like Maybach. Very Maybach Mercedes, especially with the massive 24-inch uh, monoblock style wheels. Those yeah. are fantastic. I love those. So I was talking to the chief designer, Luke, mm -hmm. right? And he said, Andre, did you touch the front of it? And I said, no, I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> but he said, Andre, pay sp special attention to the front because this is basically light through paint. I did Here. notice that, actually, yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? And there's no, there's no seams. There's yes. no... It's um, kind of this new tech that they're trying out on the concept. Yeah, I mean, this is probably never going to make it to production. It's probably too expensive, um, but it does look very clean and very just modern. And I think I think I, I like that design. Genesis honestly is killing it when it comes to design. Even like, like this little detail here, Andre. That, that might make it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, it, most of the times you see those little dots there, it's like a texture thing along with the diamonds in the actual grill. But to see it illuminated, that, that definitely gives it even more present, presence at night. Let's take a quick look on, on the, at the back, just really quick. And like they shaved everything. There's no door handles, nothing. Yeah, yeah so it has kind of like the B-pillarless door is where they kind of come out suicide style. Sadly, we can't look at the interior, but there is a 24.6 inch screen in the actual dash. I don't know if you can actually see. Oh yeah, and then it pops up. Yeah, it so it, it comes out completely when the vehicle is stationary because right now it's kind of halfway out but when it's all the way out you can't see through the windshield it blocks the windshield views. but you could watch a movie right? you could yeah, yeah you could watch a movie when you're parked when you're parked but uh i oh. actually haven't seen it with the rear hatch open oh right yeah now. this is quite interesting actually and it's also like kind of purplish almost interior yeah they called it um purple cashmere with like an indigo two-tone interior Definitely different. And you can see this one only has four seats, but I imagine when the production version comes out, it'll be a three-row vehicle. Yeah, or they could also, oh, this is kind of my, my box style, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a executive SUV, but like you said, they could have both versions if they wanted to, right? They could, yeah. Yeah, no, and also that it still has that beautiful like two-line design theme where it's completely smooth here, just like on the front. So I love how the, con the consistency here uh, with this car. But I mean, I'd say we're probably maybe two years away from seeing a production car, a production yeah, model. Yeah, so don't get too excited, guys, no, right? No. <laughs> I mean, we haven't even seen the Ionic 9 yet. So they just they just offered the EV9, which this car, I think, is going to be built off the same platform. And also GV80 Coupe has yep. been shown, but not quite reached dealerships yet, right? Mm -mm. So. So we're still a little bit away. Yeah, I think the drive is happening for it in May, but uh, sometime this summer is when the uh, 2025 GVA will show up. All right, well, Sofia, I really appreciate it. Yeah. So thank you for your insight. And I think this truly was Best of New York 2024 yeah. as far as the auto show. And also I have another little episode ah. in this podcast because I went downstairs. Okay. And there's some more classic machinery down there. So thank you for joining us. Sorry, Roman and Nathan, for taking over. <laughs> they're in I think Utah. you did a great job. They're in Utah. That's right, right they're at their Easter Jeep so far. Yeah, right? so okay. the, see, you guys are off roading right now, and Sophie and I are enjoying New York City. So, <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I really appreciate it. So, once again, Redline Reviews. So, guys, check it out. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again. And here's the downstairs. But wait, there is more. I just went downstairs. This is level one of the New York Auto Show, Javits Center. And if you don't like brand new stuff that's upstairs and all the uh, glitz up there, there's a lot of very, very cool metal down here. So I just wanted to kind of describe it to you. And um, I, I'm actually just focused on this Triano or AE86, kind of this classic coupe toyota trd but i also wanted to show you i wanted to step aside here and show you a group of amazing toyota supras just ridiculous well first first up there's just just tuned to the nines evo mitsubishi evo with a turbocharger that the size that's the size of my head just insane I know some guys in Colorado who tune these as well, and they can get upwards, you know, over a thousand horsepower from some of these motors. And this one is a drag car on slicks. I wouldn't be surprised if it's making well over, I don't know, 1500 horsepower. But here's some Toyota metal that I really wanted to show you. Many different generations of Supras. As you can see right there. Another drag car, Toyota Supra, 
with a giant, this is a new generation one. It's got a custom turbo with a huge jacket on top of it, just in case things don't go super well. It's kind of protected there. Straight six, well, it's a partnership with BMW, but look at that craftsmanship. Oh yeah. Like I would, I wanted to buy some of these Supras for so long. And of course, I'm not a super young man anymore, but when I was in high school in the late nineties, uh, okay. When I was in, in high school in the late nineties, I really, really wanted to get one of these Supra Tubros with a big wing. I never did. And now I'm kicking myself that I never did. And now they're pretty much untouchable as far as pricing, customizations, and, and the rest. So yeah, so if you don't like, you know, some of the newer stuff or some of the basic stuff, you can come down here, check out a lot of cool metal. Here's that Supra from the front. This one is on all black and looks mostly stock. Of course, it could be hiding something underneath. That's insane. Here's a Lamborghini Gallardo. And the 2JZ motor, of course, has been legendary. It's been used in many different vehicles with engine swaps. And just look at the craftsmanship of this. See-through cover on top of this gigantic turbocharger once again. Let me get a better view. There's another view for you and another wide body Supra. That's super insane. All right, so that's the Supra section. Sorry, I had to kind of do that. I, I really love some of the Toyota Supras from the late 90s or the mid 90s. Now we're going a little bit further back in time. For example, JDM Toyota 11. It's a coupe. And the quality of these cars is tremendous. You know, they're tastefully modified. There is a stereo system, wheels, really shiny, twin cam, 16 valve, GTV. Here, Honda fans. If you're a Honda fan, check out this lip spoiler. Whoa, this is almost like a Pikes Big Hill Climb version of the car. There's a nice VTEC motor. It's like jewelry sticking out up there with a big, big, huge turbocharger, blow off valve. Wow. These things are just incredible. I'm going to spend a few more minutes here. And look, they just go on for days. Lots of JDM metal as well. Let me just keep moving a little bit. Here's more, more Hondas. Civics, Acuras, Integras, Type R's. All kinds of different modification styles and customizations. Some race cars, some just fun cars. Lexus IS. Custom body Porsche. Just really kind of eclectic selection and collection of vehicles. And there's a Mustang back there, right there with the wild paint job. Some Subarus and Mitsubishis. If you're an Evo fan, you can check some of these out. Wow, amazing quality. This also drew my eye. There is a Land Cruiser 80 series, modified, sitting on gigantic tires. It looks like somebody lifted it and put it on 40s. Maybe it's even a larger tire, 40th anniversary. I'm guessing it's 40s. Um, it's probably a little bit larger than I would go as far as a lift and um, on a 80 series Land Cruiser, but this one is super well done. I can just see the attention to detail and the roof rack and the snorkel and the wheels and tires and the paint job is kind of cleaned up and done really good. 
Four by four from NY. Right there. Ooh, Viper. Nice. Another one of those dream cars, SRT10. SRT10 cars that I would like to have at some point. People sometimes ask me what's my favorite car, and there's no simple answer. Because I also love German cars. Just look at this Mercedes. Mercedes AMG Classic. V8 Compressor. Compressor car, supercharged. Oof, nice. Yeah, there's no simple answer because when you're at the show like this, you could be looking at a Fair Lady Nissan Z 280 or a car like this. You can be looking at the Mercedes or a SRT10 Viper or as another Z car and you start wondering, okay, I would like to have this, this, this and that. And for different purposes, maybe one for drag racing, another one for just having some fun on the weekends, uh, cruising. Uh, then, of course, you need the pickup truck, you need to lift it 4x4. So there's no simple answer. So I think the real answer is, oof, skylines. Many amazing skylines here as well. The real answer is, you just try to maybe own a few and then move them on. Own one, move it on, sell it off, buy another one and different different make or maybe model and kind of keep moving through it keep moving through them because not all of us can afford eight or ten vehicles at the same time in fact most of us can't and what is this a 1993 jaguar xj220 i think this car was on my a poster on my wall i also have a model of this on my shelf, just a very super, super car from the past, kind of my era. I'm kind of afraid to say that this car may be one of those cars that you kind of don't want to meet your childhood heroes because you might be disappointed slightly because that this car is probably kind of hard to live with and very high strung. And if you build it up in your mind as a kid, uh, you could be disappointed. And finally, I want to end on a couple of off-roaders here. So I see a really well done new generation Chevy Colorado ZR2, but it appears to have a small lift. It has really nice custom wheels and tires and a roof rack and KC lights and graphics and a bed rack and a tent and many different sponsors as well. Woo. I want to do this to my Colorado. There's also a um, current forerunner, current generation forerunner next to it. This is the vehicle of Colorado really. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that the quality of the vehicles downstairs here is super, super high. So if you don't find something interesting upstairs, go ahead and come down. Like the suspension on this Ford Bronco two door, the new gen is just out of this world. It uses a custom King, King setup with the remote reservoirs and remote A-arms. And uh, I'm sorry, customized A-arms. Whew. wide body fenders all right so i want to close out on this thanks for joining me and thanks to sofian for uh actually taking over the car chat tfl car chat podcast i'll see you next time and you can see i'm drawn to trucks because i'm ending this podcast next standing next to a pickup truck this is best of new york 2024 auto show thanks for joining us I'll see you next time and check out oldtfl.com for everything automotive in one place. Thank you.